who is behind the mask what are you thinking about yes today we have seen the one who is behind the mask and who is that person that you want to see right over here he just unveiled himself that yes he is not in the government he just wants to just start his own convention to just make sure that africa is now a better place for us to be welcome to the channel can you subscribe if you're new right here on this channel do want to hit the bell icon and get a notification related to what you want to see right here on this channel my name is billy and you are watching this channel right over here please do me a favor by subscribing also hitting on the bell icon and let's get interacted right over here yeah here we give you a lot of you know news content you know recreational stuff that you love to see right over here so what is happening at the trending market right over here as today we can confirm that the one who is just behind the max that we are seeing right here on your screen has just unveiled himself after a lot of you know rumors just went on viral for a lot of speculations that has gone on yes people were saying that he is the one but you know for now we can hear it from his own mouth right over here as a lot of you know events has been organized but this event that has been organized by chair that we're talking about nana bidiakon has been cancelled or has been caught off when the military just stormed the independent square not allowing this program to take place he was just, you know, telling the whole world that he is just in for the development of Africa. Let's hear him as he just held a press conference right over here in Ghana. Become an example of what wealth looks like. And building wealth comes from knowledge, it comes from wisdom, it comes from understanding. You need to get this value from your own surroundings. I grew up partly in Ghana partly in England, and I came back to Africa. 2001, unlike Martin Luther, I did not have a dream, I had a vision. I started watching the youth and the streets and the roads, the rules and the regulations, the conditions and the constitutions that is stipulated and embedded on us as Africans. I had to walk on a different path, and I was alone. My investment on the roads became a landmark. And whatever I invested on this landmark is a footprint. I am here for a legacy. I am part of your historians. And I know many people want to see the true side of me. I know you know Nana Kwame Bidiakwa, but I know you're still looking for freedom, Jacob Caesar. Yes, I am Red Christian and I'm here. I'm not here to take your value. I'm here to add value to you. I discovered that the land that we belong to had so much wealth that until we turn it into our own, our economy will never be sustainable. And we cannot forever leave, leave in our countries with a box economy. I needed to create a middle income economy without being a part of the government. Why so? Because I believe it's part of my responsibility. I took a different path. My movement, my foundation, my groups, and all of this have acquired some wealth. But the wealth that I reimbursed back into society, it has become a part of my mission to make this change. I believe that I belong to Africa. I am a son of this soil. And I can add value to humanity. And I came here to do that. I came here to add value to this world and to nature. I am not going to live here without God even being proud of me. And when I'm not here also, I want you to remember that I came. And I want my absent to be felt. And for that reason, I know you're looking for the man. And the man in the mask is sitting in front of you. to you as your salvation. I don't invest in myself alone. I am investing in you. And truly, these innocent leaders sitting beside me, of course I will not go to them and tell them that, hey, I am a man in a mask and I want you to come to Ghana to support me to do this and this. And this man of this dignity and this woman with such power will say, yes, I'm going to follow you to come to Ghana to do your convention and all of that. No. It is part of the movement. 
We need to educate. We need to uplift our children. We need to voice out to them. If you are about to find out about this man in the mask, because I never spoke a word, you were looking for me. I didn't tell you whether I am into politics, whether I am an evangelist, whether I am a conventionist or a revolutionist. After this day, you will have to wait for me to share my policies and my visions with you. And if I'm the reason why the country or the government is not happy about these great voices coming to educate not only Ghana, but also Africa, then I'll take this moment to sacrifice myself, to unveil myself, because I have much respect for these great leaders beside me. It would have taken my own time to tell you that I am. But for this very moment, I am sacrificing myself to let you know that I'm that man. But I'm that man with a good purpose, with a great vision. I have a plan and I have a vision for this nation. And not only this nation, I have it for Africa too. But I know Africa is the next biggest thing because out of all the continents that have been developed in this world, there is only one continent that is not developed. And I am sent to do that. I am not interested in people's positions. I am not interested in presidential positions. I am interested in the regions and the humans. I am interested in the countries. I am interested in the continent. The resources here, the human resources here, the great opportunities to be able to prove a point to the world that this is what we can make out of ourselves as a black society. We have been doomed and disrespected and devalued by everybody in the Western world. My pain is in my heart and I can't express it to you. So I let my actions speak for me. I want to thank you very much for this moment. And I want to thank Fresh of what him and his foundation think about African solution to African problems how we can use our human and natural resources to change our circumstances so that we can be beggars no more. You are touched. You are present here. You are journalists. will give the oxygen of publicity to what we are saying here today. I want to thank African leaders rising up to their responsibility that is keeping Africa where Africa is today. A continent of immense hope and resources. The only way to resuscitate and keep that hope is by having competence. Leadership. A leadership that means well. That is the only way to make a difference. As long as we continue hiring wrongly, as long as we continue having incompetence, people who don't have capacity, who remain where we are. To change that hope for the youth is to know that it requires sacrifice and everything. We talked about education. Yes, I agree with my dear sister that on issue of a colonized, educated, whatever I think. But what are the leadership today doing in terms of investing in those critical areas? I was just talking to talk to me about this evening, and I said to them, you don't, yes, it's good when people, and that's not them, I do that with you. It's good to blame others for our problem. I don't believe in blaming anybody for my problem. I deal with the problem. We are dealing this evening. In my country, due to this year's budget, is we need, if there's anything Nigeria needs, is human capital. 
Because that's what will drive our HDI. We have very low human capital. The HDI, we are 158 over 180 countries measured. So we need to invest in education. But we are providing for tertiary institution scholarship, 5 billion, in our budget. And we have 6 billion to build car park for legislators. <laughs> is, is that, is, is that a